So Hana, the next one would be again. This is this is a cultural thing where uh, I want to see how the East is different from the West, or is it not? So mm-hmm. in the East, there's a very common thing that oh, but if you don't have children, what about your family name, your bloodline, your legacy, and your lineage, and all these things? Mm-hmm. How yeah. do you feel about that? I just feel so uh, about that. I don't know. It gives me the ick um, that people think that they're so special. You know, uh, I have absolutely no interest in uh, keeping my legacy going. I just we are we are a species like a tree is a species like a lion is a species, and none of them care. Um, yeah, it really gives me the ick. I don't I don't like this, and I don't care. <laughs> I simply yeah, okay. don't care. Easy, short, and sweet answer. Okay, so the next one is more uh, uh, of a personal thing, or rather a natural thing. So, mm-hmm. just like you said, trees and lions and all this. So, I, I have the same question. So, trees have seeds, earthworms, insects, um, fishes, and all animals have the biological need or the urge to procreate. How do you feel about that? Like you're cutting, you're g- getting away from something which is really hundred percent natural. What is your stance on that? Well, I mean, I'm no scientist, but surely there are anomalies in the animal kingdom also. Like, and if there aren't, then maybe that's part of our evolutionary process is that we've been able to, you know, develop free free thought and the ability to um, do other things with our lives that give us fulfillment or or it will leave legacy you know there are a lot of people who have not had kids and left legacies um, of different kinds whether that's charity or book or uh, a movie or whatever it is um, so I think yeah in terms of like the continuation of the species I'm not worried about it <laughs> if I'm unnatural then like good for me I'm some like that's, I'm like an x-men like a mutant breed <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is also this is also a very common thing which happens um, in most. I think this is this is probably in most of the cultures. But how do you find sense of purpose in life if you don't have children? What is the sense of purpose? Okay, yeah, this is another one. I guess it sort of relates to your legacy, but um, I, I have a lot of purpose. Like I have a very fun and fulfilling and wonderful time on this planet, and have had so far, and will continue to have. Um, so I don't need children in order to do things that are good for other people, that are good for myself, that are good for my family and my, my friends and my community. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really understand why children would. If anything, I actually feel that when people have kids, their sense of purpose is entirely located on their children and yes. doing things for their, their family and actually they don't think outside their wider community unless like something affects them like I don't know they want the soccer club to get regrassed or whatever like I just I feel like uh, at least in my experience and with my child free community and my child free friends we have a broader we have broader thoughts about the environment and I'm like, I'm one, the best recycler out of all of my parent friends and the best environmentalist that I would know. Sorry about that. Um, and so, yeah, I think, and again, this is not everybody for sure, um, but I do tend to see that um, more in parents than I do in people who don't have kids. Okay, so let me add on to one thing that you said, okay, which I liked is the, I always say this, okay, the greenest thing to do on this planet is not to get solar panels. It's not to live off grid. It's not about switching off the lights if you're not using that room. It's not. No. It's not about not printing your emails. You know, there's like please don't print thing before you print. It's not those. The, the greenest thing, according to me, on this planet is to not bring in a new life because with the new life, with every new child there there's consumption that comes automatically with it automatically right mm-hmm. that that child will grow up and need everything that you need or maybe a little bit more so yeah. so that's the greenest thing you can do so that's I what understand. i tell myself when i book a fly i'm like it's okay i can fly i'm not yes. contributing a human <laughs> yes yes okay so the next thing is again more biological 
uh, because it's fear based uh, it's a fear based question that people ask mm-hmm. but what about old age so what happens when hana gets old who's going to take care of hana when she's old so first of all old age is not guaranteed um uh my father died young i lost a friend recently who was 36 years old um I've lost many people around me who have not lived to old age uh and I think this idea that you're going to live to old age is naive in some aspects. Of course that doesn't mean don't plan for your future because maybe you get lucky and you do live to old age. I'm not planning on getting old. I don't think anything good happens after 70 for women. So <laughs> um but yeah, I'm I mean in terms of answering this economically, I my husband and I are very well set up. Uh we made good choices when we were young. We continue to make good financial choices. So, uh yeah, I'll pay for someone to look after me. Also, like I said, I live in a community now, maybe I don't live in a community forever, but I am someone who has people around me. And like one of my best friends here on the farm is an 80-year-old woman. We love her so much. She has kids, they live in the states, she lives here, and she's got people around her constantly. And I think this is a huge thing is like having a good unit of friends and people um that you may or may not need to look after you, but I just don't I think expecting someone who isn't a professional caregiver to look after you is also super selfish. <laughs> yes, okay. So, one last thing then is um, what is it that I did not ask or we did not cover in this discussion that you want to talk about and and spread a message just about your experiences and and this aspect of us touching this aspect of life. I guess it's just that um child free lifestyle or childlessness doesn't have to be uh a stereotype of this sad spinster woman living at home with her cats also i think there that narrative most people are like that sounds awesome actually <laughs> like i just think it's um like i can speak for people who are in a relationship as well uh you know that may think that what they need to make their relationship more loving or better is to bring a child as a physical component of their love or whatever narrative you want to tell around this and all i can say is i have loved my partner more and more each year that we've grown and developed together we know more about each other now and i feel like now we're really coming into who we are as people and it's so fun to go on that journey together and i think that if we'd had kids that just we just wouldn't have evolved the way that we have and and uh we live a very filled fulfilled adventurous fun full spectrum life filled with you know amazing wonderful things and also shitty crappy things like anybody else but um those things don't include like having the flu and then also having to somehow get your children to school like we just don't have to worry sweat so much small stuff um yeah. and that leaves a lot of room to you know expand yeah. as a human being which i think is yeah. pretty rad <laughs> Yeah. So I'll I'll add on to this. I liked what you said. So I'll add on to this part which is which is very important is when you are child free by choice and when when you are with someone as in whether it is it is married or unmarried so you're together a couple what happens my observation is that you are the the relationship is without distractions and without excuses and without hiding behind oh I have a child hence I have to be together with this person right because oh we are in this marriage because of him or her and whatever son or daughter so that's the difference so what i see because in my relationship so we are married for 6 years now it's pure as in mm. we are together because we want to be together we are together right. because we like to be together we we enjoy our time together right so the things that we do the things the topics that we talk about that's why we are together not because oh if we get divorced then it affects the child a lot of people do that you know or rather they yeah. don't want to get they are hiding behind excuses So it makes yeah. so I can see it, I can see it when you are you've been consistently saying this since the beginning of the discussion yeah. and I can see that it's the same so you have it naturally becomes more pure and unadulterated and and you don't have to hide you are you are what you are and you are talking and discussing and in sync right? yeah and if I can add on to your point as well of this it's um I've always sort of said 
that um, this emphasis on family first and like blood runs thicker than water keeps a lot of people in very toxic relationships. Exactly, exactly. And I think that this needs to change immediately because family is not good for everybody. And there can be members of your family that are absolutely, I'm like, that are just not no. good for your mental health, for your physical health in some cases. Um, so I, I just think the narrative on that needs to change and this emphasis on, yeah, like family being the number one greatest thing you can achieve in your life. It's like, well, uh, not for everybody. <laughs> but but there's, there's another thing that I wanted to add, Hannah, to this is how do you define family is the problem. Yeah. The problem is what is family? The definition, does it have to be by birth? Does it have to be by blood? Like, can you, can, is there no other dis definition of family? Does it have to be right. only my son and only my mother and only my father? I mean, I live with 15 other people from around the whole world. So you're exactly. talking to someone that who is family. defines their family. Yeah, by my community <laughs> and the people I surround myself with. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Hannah, the last question then for today is what made you or what inspired you to like oh i want to talk to this guy i want to i want to come in front because it's a topic that not everybody wants to talk about right so what is your like oh i want to talk to this guy and, and let's let's share my views yeah i think for me um especially when i moved to berlin this term child free came into my uh hemisphere and my stratosphere because i'd never even heard that before and i'd always said like i don't want kids i don't want kids and i didn't have a word for it and now not only do we have a word for it we have so many stories surfacing about it and i think that's been so helpful for me to define my journey and get stronger in discussing being child free and the benefits that come with that and you know eliminating stereotypes and stigmas around it so this is why i'm here because i'm happy for this to broaden out as wide as it needs to so yeah, that's that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll do this and then I would ask you to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to look in the camera sure. and say that if you're watching this video, please like, share and subscribe. Not because everybody else on YouTube says it. It's because the more people see it, the more people talk about it, the more the idea becomes accepted and normalized and, and understood rather. Because there are a lot of people who, who review mobile phones. Who so many people do that? There are a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people who are talking about cars. Too many people doing that so we really need people to talk about this so if you are child free by choice please come and talk about it and and there are wonderful people like hannah who st share their stories so if you, please share your story hannah i want you to say the same things in looking at the camera please sure all right everybody uh please like share and subscribe to this channel because it is super important to share our child free stories with the rest of the planet and you should not be shy about sharing yours because yen is a lovely safe environment for you to do so <laughs> yes thank you so again right I'm, it's so crazy right there are so many channels talking about mobile it just blows my mind when i see those videos about mobile phones and and <laughs> and, and cars all the time like Nobody's talking about this. I don't watch these videos, but I watch enough celebrity crap to know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, Hannah, thanks a lot for your time. It was wonderful talking to you, and I can see how we can resonate. And the the it's 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 lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure and good questions. Thank you. So, thanks for watching this video. Uh, we will be making more videos in future about child-free lifestyle. But I also wanted to say that if you if you see our channel, if you see the history of our channel, you will see a lot of videos where we we've been child-free. Of course, we've been child-free since we met. But you can see the journey. You can see our journey. How what happens when a couple is child-free is all documented nicely, not intentionally. As in, we were just recording our videos for our documentation. But now I realize that when I've started doing this series, I just realized that hey. Uh, this is good because people can see how a child-free couple actually lives when when they don't have children. Yeah, do you want to yeah. say something? Yeah, yeah perfect. So keep uh, watching and um, have fun. Bye-bye.